Hello and welcome to this new Construct 3 demonstration where I'll show you how to create a floating thumbstick. So here we are, this is the thumbstick and I'm pushing with my mouse which is now simulating a, uh, a touch of a touching device and the, the thumbstick is going around and if we press this one here of course uh, it, uh, the tank will shoot. Um, Actually, it's a multi-touch game, but I can't simulate that now because I'm working on a computer. Uh, but if I were to use a touch device, I would be able to shoot at the same time using the other uh, control. So as you can see, uh, the little area is going around and it, the tank is inert when it stays right in the middle. Um, but whenever we move to the side, uh, we go in one direction um, and the little area the little uh, bluish area is not going outside of the bigger area and once uh, the bluish area hits the edges of that area you can see that within the left side of the uh, of the game the area the bigger area will also move across the screen so how does this work? Um, we've got the tank of course which got an 8 direction and also a scroll to uh, behavior. Um, this is pretty simple, it's just a fire sprite and this is also pretty simple. A text area and hasn't got any behaviors, it's just got two instance variables called A for angle and D for distance. And then this little pin has got nothing at all. Uh, we'll see what it does in the code in just a minute. So these are two things that belong together, not inside a container or something, but they do act as one. Um, so, so the code starts here with the uh, position, the text area and the position of the pin being set equal to each other. By setting the position of the pin, to the image point zero of the text of the thumbnail area, which is just the origin point uh, smack in the middle, and we uh, initialize A and D, which are the two uh, variables, uh, instance variables of the area, and then we will evaluate all of the touch counts, uh, all of the touches on uh, the, the screen right now, and we do that using the touch count variable, which will indicate how many fingers are on the screen right now. And then we loop through those two touches uh, to see which one of the touches is smaller. Its, its x coordinate is smaller than 400, and 400 is about in the middle of the screen. So we only evaluate that touch that is at the left hand side of the screen. So why do we do that? Of course, uh, if you're using two touches and one of the two touches is firing the tank, um, that one will be at the right hand side of the screen and that one we don't have to take care of because firing the tank is actually just here when firing buzzer if it's touching the fire button and every 0.4 seconds we just spawn a bullet and the bullet goes away using the bullet behavior and then we go in so but essentially there's are two touches so we only need to operate on the uh, touch which is happening at the left hand side of the screen and we just do that by check, first checking how many touches there are and if it's greater than one or greater than zero sorry we are uh, looping through them from zero to touch count minus one so whenever that touch x coordinates x at for the loop index meaning that the current one in this loop here uh, is smaller than 400 pixels then we do something um, so what we then do is we set a variable show thumb, thumbstick to one which is this variable here we just say that it is showing we do something let me collapse that here and after uh, after doing everything here this piece of code is also executed uh, whenever it's not touching we will not whenever nothing is touching or whenever nothing is touching at the left hand side of the screen this variable will not get set this will remain at zero and this will be executed because this checks if it is zero and then we set the position of the text area to minus 
1000 minus 1000 so it's somewhere off screen and as on every tick we set the position both the area and the pin will disappear so that's how this works so whenever we're touching at the left hand side of the screen um, we check if the text not the text area the thumbnail area is not on the screen then we put it to the position of the touch so the touch position of the loop index here which is currently looping touch count uh, we use the x add and the y add expressions of the touch plugin to set the position of the uh, thumbnail area and then we do some uh, calculations um, first what we do is we determine the angle so we determine the angle of the middle of the thumbnail area towards the point we're touching right now. So let me demonstrate that. You can see here, here at the top as well. So I'm going to press and I'm going to go to the right. The angle becomes somewhat zero. You see, if I, if I go in the right direction, to the right the angle becomes zero because we are going to the right um, starting from the center and going to the right. If we start from the center, we go up, the angle becomes ni minus 90 degrees. Go down, we go plus 90 degrees. Go left, we go 180 degrees. So the A variable is just determining the angle of the middle of the um, thumbnail area to where my touch position is. In this case, my mouse position because we're virtually touching of course and um, that's what it does and it is a second variable called distance and you can see that at the top as well the farther I move away from the center the higher the distance will get so it's these two variables we made here and it's these two variables which are set here so first we set the angle the a instance variable and we do that using the angle um, function which is a built-in function very handy just give two positions x and y coordinates the first x and y coordinate and the second x and y coordinate and actually that's going to give you the angle um, second thing is we are determining the distance and we see here that the distance uh, will be determined by also the center of the thumbnail area and the x and y coordinate but it's only a helper variable this one here here we have a local variable and then we take the minimum of the distance we just calculated and the text area width divided by two and wind pin width divided by three so what that does is if we go back if we can show that here if we were not to do that and we were just to um take the the distance itself um, we would have be able to do this. We will be able to go outside of the area without stopping at the edge of the area. And by doing that, we are maximizing the the, the point where we're going to uh, move towards uh, no further than the width of the uh, the, the 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 area, the width of the area minus the pin width divided by three. And you might ask yourself why divide by two and why divide by three. Well, uh, if we don't, so the width of this thing is from here to here, and we're starting from the origin, which is in the middle. So suppose we don't do anything, divide by two or divide by three, the maximum will be somewhere over here, because the distance from here to here is equal to the distance of there to there. So that's also only half of the thumbnail area half of the red area then we would the result would be something like this it would be going that far um, we could subtract the pin area which is the blue thing divided by two and this would be the result we only go that that far but we're going we wanted to go a little bit beyond like this so we actually divide by three and that's what we do here divide by three and then we just set the position of the pin to um, the area, the x coordinate plus the d times the cosine of a um, and the y plus d times the sine of a. And a lot of you might be 
uh, skeptic poll about the science and cosines, not that really big on trigonometry, but let me explain that to you in a way that you will never forget. So, sine and cosine, actually what we're doing here, we have to, um, what I'll do is I'll just get um, an x and a y coordinate here, so this is x, this is y, right? Let this be the center here, the center of the area, the center point of the t area. And then we have to determine, oh, we've got a red or a blue ball here. The blue ball needs to go here, for example. This is the center of the blue ball. So we need to determine the x and y coordinate of where that blue indicator, the t-pin, needs to go. But the only thing we have, and let me do that in purple, for example, the only thing we have is this line here. And this is, the length of this line is d. And we also have the angle, and the angle is A. But we have only A and D. How do we determine the X and Y coordinate of this thing here, this point? So actually what we need is the coordinate, if we use dotted lines here, we need this, which is the X coordinate, and we need that, which is the y coordinate. We need to determine that. And for that, very handy, you can use trigonometry, of course. Because um, remember the sine and the cosine. I, I, I remember the sine and cosine using a uh, using a trick, and it's called Sokotoa. So, Sokotoa. And this is for sine, which is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And cosine is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And this is for tangent. We don't need that right now. So we know that the sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So the sine will be this distance divided by this distance. The cosine will be the adjacent, which is this one, divided by this one. So what do we have now? We, we say that the cosine of a certain angle, and this is the angle A, equals to the adjacent divided by the hypothesis. Great. But what do we have in this variable? We have A, which is the uh, the, the corner here, the, the angle, and we have H. But we need to determine A. We need to determine this length, because by determining A, we know the length of this, of this uh, line, and hence we know the x-coordinate. So the only thing we have to do is move this variable to the other side of the assignment, which we will then multiply by it. Here we divide, so we move it to the other side of the equal sign. So we multiply it. So then we just say that this goes away, and we say A is H times the cosine of alpha. And And of course, that's what will happen. D times the cosine of alpha. That's what we do here. H, which is actually D. Times the cosine of A. And that's what happens here. And in the same way, we do d times the sine of a. Let me just revisit that here. d times the sine of a because we can see that the sine of a 
equals the opposite divided by the apotenus. So a divided by, I could write h, but I will immediately write d, because in our example that h is d here. We move that one over there. We just say d times sine of a equals the opposite, which is exactly this line, which gives us the y coordinate. So that's why we so that's why we use d times sine of a. The only thing then we do is we finger drag the d spin further. So if the distance is larger than the area, we move the pic, move it in pixels toward the a, towards that angle, and that will take care of that the fact that the area will move in the direction of my uh, finger um, whenever we're going uh, further into that direction um, and then whenever there's no thumbstick we will uh, set the position to somewhere outside of the screen of course we set the text here the text values uh, all on the screen to indicate which angle and which distance and then um, this is where actually uh, the tank is uh, moving, so whenever the distance of the T area is greater than 10, we call that a dead zone, for it to smack in the middle to prevent uh, very slight in, uh, variations in our touch behavior to make the tank go crazy left, right, left, right. We only do something if our distance is bigger than 10. So uh, then we set uh, the X vector and the Y vector again using the sine and cosine I just explained to you. Um, what we do here is divided by 4, uh, or multiply by 4 rather than divided. We multiply by 4. Why? Because that would be two tiny variations in the direction. You can, it's very, very subtle uh, variations. And if you get to the, a far bigger number, like 400 or something, the direction changes of the tank would be too snappy. It would go from one direction immediately to another direction. So it's a little of, a little bit of a, of, a, of a balancing act here and 4 is a good, good indication of a multiplier for that vector to make it a smooth uh, transition. So this is precise control and as the, the comment says here if you want a more 8 direction keyboard like control you can also use the simulation in direction here by uncommenting this here um, but I'll stay with this uh, smooth directional thing here so that's it as always please like and subscribe I will leave a link in the description to where you can get the templates here um, and see you next time